you can create various scenes with Biome Generator. If you're familiar with Biome Generator, you might know how to create a biome. If you don't, please watch the previous tutorials. They will help you create your first biome. In this tutorial, we'll delve into features more in depth. To use Biome Generator, first, you need to enable PCG plugins. Open the Plugins tab and type PCG. Then activate those three plugins. Drag and drop BG Field Actor. You'll see three intersecting spheres. They have a function, but we'll get into that later. For now, let's uncheck Pathfinder Vis, and they will disappear. I will use my own custom deposit. If you have no deposit ready to use, you can always use Showcase Deposit Actor for testing purposes. Hit Get Theme and then Force Generate. If you have enabled PCG plugins, this is all it takes to create a biome. If you look at the detail panel of BG Field Actor, you can see various categories. If you have watched previous tutorials, you might be familiar. They all have the same functionalities, but have been separated for a better experience. For this tutorial, we'll use only trees. First, let's start with field and fall off. Field is the inner area of the field, and fall off is the outer area. Fall off distance controls how big the fall off is. If you set it to 2500, the fall off area will be 2500 units wide. Fall off is not completely independent from the field area. Field area's density always affects fall off area's density. For example, if you increase the field trees, fall off trees will also increase. Only fall off density and point extent are dependent on field density, other attributes are independent. If you open the field category, you'll see plane, slope and slope threshold. Let's create a hill. As you can see, all trees on the slope side of the hill disappeared because I have set density in the slope category to zero, so no tree will appear on the hillside. Slope threshold is the one that controls where is plane, and where is slope. One means everywhere is slope, and zero means everywhere is plane. Seed attributes let you regenerate. Transform min and max let you change their transforms. Point extent and boundary extend are a little bit complicated. For those unfamiliar with PCG plugins, For this tutorial, I have made an example actor. This actor is not included in the biome generator. PCG first samples the points, 
All meshes spawn on these points. No point intersects each other. Point extent controls their size. Biome generator spawns selected meshes on these points. And it ensures that no grass, rocks, etc. intersect with trees. Boundary extent controls this. For example, if you make to 2222 for trees, biome generator won't spawn anything in every tree mesh's doubled boundaries. For trees, I usually prefer 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. By that, nothing won't spawn on its tenth of its size. Normally PCG Plugin won't sample intersecting points, but we're retransforming those points, rotating, relocating, rescaling. Transformation min and max attributes control these. This will make some points intersect each other. You might not want that. Self-pruning erases any intersecting point. Now for the road category. Expand this category, and you'll see to other subcategories. They also have plane and slope settings. So, what are those, and how do inner, outer, and road width affect them? Let's start with road width. For this tutorial, I have made a spline actor. It has no code or anything. You can create a spline actor easily. Create an actor and add a spline component. Let's drag and drop it into the scene. As you can see, nothing happens because BG field actor doesn't detect it as road. Select your spline actor and in the details panel type tags, add a new tag as path. Now, field sees it as a road and erases the road areas. Road width controls the road width for field and fall off. Y axis controls the width of your road. Don't forget this width attribute is actually not an absolute scale, but a multiplier. If you set your width, for example, to 300, it will multiply your spline width by 300. This might be very important, because landscape splines are very wide already, and usually, 
you should set your width to 1. But a normal spline has a width of 1 unit, so in most cases, there is no problem giving high values to road width like 300. Check Pathfinder Vis. You'll see three spheres. Your field searches for a path in those areas. If those spheres cover the spline actor, your field detects your road. So first, your spline has to have a path tag. Then your Pathfinder spheres need to cover your spline. X-axis controls the extra length most of the time. The value of 1 is OK, but I like to set it to 10. Z-axis controls the height. In most cases, you don't really need to think about the height because the field will detect it quite well. However, it sometimes gives errors in slope areas. So, I usually set it to a high value, such as 2000, so the field practically gives no errors. Once you erase all of your trees on the road, maybe you want to spawn special type of trees on the roadside or even on the road itself. In order to spawn trees on the roadside and on road, you should assign roadside and on road trees. You should set your inner and outer width. But be cautious. Inner and outer widths are dependent on each other. For example, you set inner width to 200 and outer width to 300. So, on road width becomes 200 and roadside width becomes 100 because 300 minus 200 is 100. So roadside width is set to 100. For the latest update, master and subfields have been removed and replaced by the level system. In the details panel, you'll see a level category. For example, let's check level 3. Give other 1 to the level 3 tag. Now, our first field erases the area of the tagged field. Fields can have multiple tags. If you want to bake your biome, Add the Bake component to your field. Select that component and click Bake Field.
If you want to use runtime generation, you can always call force generate on other actors. You just need to have a reference to your field. Alternatively, you can use the runtime trigger component. Let's say you want to randomize your field every time, and you don't want to reset all the densities by hand. You want to not just recreate, but also randomize the tree densities, rock densities, etc. Add the field randomizer component to your field. Select it. You can randomize your densities within the range, however you want here. You can set all densities by just one attribute, or set them one by one. Your field randomizes the densities within the range you have set.